he's ready to bridge the gap in their inspection knowledge. Hey everyone, welcome back to Flight School. We're discussing the topic of bridge inspection. With us is Dave Berman. Dave is an expert bridge inspector and he is going to take us out to the field where he will walk us through the specific workflow steps. Give us the rundown, Dave. In this episode, we will focus on the specific steps for conducting a bridge inspection using Skydio 3D Scan. We will also cover pre-flight mission planning and what to do with the data after you're finished. Here, we will be inspecting the Forest Hill Bridge in Auburn, California. We'll be using this location to teach you all the ways you can use your Skydio drone for bridge inspection. At the concrete pillars, we will show you how to perform a 3D capture and how to use this data to reconstruct a 3D model. At the truss of the bridge, we'll show you how to perform a manual or point of interest inspection, leveraging the Skydio Autonomy Enterprise features. And finally, we will use map capture to capture the deck of the bridge, which also can be used for photogrammetry reconstruction. We have a lot to cover in this episode. Let's get started. Before going out to perform your mission, you should have a plan for your structure and environment. Here's our mission planning checklist. First, figure out the type of data you'll need to capture. In this case, we want to create a model of the bridge pillars and the bridge deck, and then capture highly detailed images of the trusses. Therefore, we'll use a variety of capture methods and settings to get the data we need. For equipment, let's make sure we have plenty of batteries, and perhaps even a way to charge them on site. We, of course, will need our drone, controller, and any other field gear, such as personal protection equipment. Because we're flying 3D scan, we'll need a media card and a log card. So be sure you have at least two UHS Class 3 SD cards with plenty of storage. It's always good practice to have a few extras, just in case. Prior to flying this bridge, we need to check that the airspace is clear and that there are no hazards. We're lucky this bridge is in Class G airspace, which means we are clear to fly, maintaining visual line of sight. If you're flying in the United States, you can check your airspace around your bridge using the app called Before You Fly. If you're operating outside of the US, then make sure you follow all airspace and UAS regulations. The main hazard to be aware of for this scan is the traffic driving over the bridge. We will enable strict boundaries for the drone so it doesn't fly over traffic. Oftentimes, snooper trucks or other methods require traffic mitigation. As long as we can set a strict ceiling during our flight, traffic can continue flowing during our inspection. We'll cover how to enable a strict ceiling shortly. The final step of your pre-flight mission planning is to identify your operating area. You need to maintain line of sight with your drone at all times. Therefore, we'll set up our operational areas here for our pillar scans, and here and here for our manual inspection and here for upward capture. We will also set up at the top of the bridge for our map capture. You'll need to adjust your mission planning for your particular inspection, but those are the basics that you should always prepare for. Let's check in with Nicole in the studio to see if we're missing anything from our mission planning. Everything looks good from here. One last tip from our flight test team is that when you're planning a 3D scan, you should always try to take off and land close to your structure. This will help you save battery and ultimately, get you better data. Yes, this applies to all 3D scans, not just bridge inspections. Great tip. All right, now that we have our mission plan, let's fly. Now it's time to perform your pre-flight inspection. This is an important step. Check that the battery is fully seated. Clean all the cameras on your drone and make sure your drone is free of damage, including the props. Lift and inspect the antennas. Make sure the takeoff area is clear and that you are launching close to your structure. Your organization may have additional best practices to follow, so be sure to include these in your pre-flight inspection. Once you've performed your pre-flight inspection, you're ready to launch. 
Let's start by scanning our first bridge pillar. Enter 3D Scan and select 3D Capture as your type of scan. Next, name your scan. Then, launch. You will then set your rally point. This is the point your drone will return to when your scan completes, if you lose connection, or your battery runs low. We recommend using the launch point. However, you can manually set your rally point if you wish. Now comes defining your scan volume, the bottom, top, and then sides. Set your scan floor. This is the bottom of the scan volume. Then set the scan ceiling. This is the top of your scan volume. Next, set your boundaries around the bridge pillar. Since these boundaries are used to define the scan volume, it's important that the pillars are set close to your structure. Most likely, you'll want to turn on a strict ceiling, meaning that the drone will not go above the bridge deck at any point during the scan. Let's make sure to enable a strict geofence for the ceiling. Set the AR observer point. Throughout the scan, this observer view will update with real-time scan data to show you your coverage of your structure. This is an augmented reality overlay, but uses real data from the scan to show the coverage of your structure. We recommend setting the AR observer point manually. Select a good vantage point where you can monitor the scan's progress and make sure it's in a safe location away from any hazards. Next, your drone will begin exploring the scan volume. Select Edit Settings to adjust the speed at which your drone completes the Explore phase. Once the Explore phase is done, you will have the option to edit your settings before your scan begins. This is an important step. The settings that will have the biggest impact on your overall flight time are your distance to surface and overlap. Closer distance to surface means the drone will take more photos to cover your capture area and result in higher quality imagery, but longer scan time. Greater distance to surface means your drone can capture more of the structure in fewer photos and will complete the scan in less time, but at lower resolution. Toggle on the AR coverage mesh to monitor your scan photo coverage. Pause at any point during your scan to manually fly to a location. Press the play button to resume autonomous scanning. At the end of the automated scan, you can fly manually to capture any additional data. Once the scan completes, return to launch, or your rally point if one was set. When ready, land your drone and select Save. Once your scan is processed, you'll be able to view it in the Edge Model Viewer. Here, you can verify you got all the data you need. Everything looks good. Now that you know how to perform a 3D scan, you can apply this to other parts of your structure. You can even scan the entire bridge and combine your scans into a single 3D model using photogrammetry software. Let's head to the truss, where we will show you how to perform a manual or point of interest inspection with your Skydio drone. Here, we are inspecting some potential rust forming on the underside of the bridge. Let's make sure our obstacle avoidance is set to standard. We'll reduce it if we need to. We'll set a height ceiling, just to make sure we stay below the traffic, and then we'll fly out to our inspection area. With normal inspection methods, you're going to have a hard time getting to this area. But with Skydio, this should be quick and easy. Because Skydio navigates visually, it can operate in GPS-denied environments like underneath this bridge. As we get closer, let's turn on Stop at Structure. This will allow your drone to stick to your inspection point, allowing you to perform a finer, more detailed inspection. Now, we're going to point the gimbal upwards so we can inspect those difficult to reach areas like undersides of bridges. During this flight, Skydio's AI is constantly processing data around you to avoid obstacles, operate in areas with high electromagnetic interference, and warn the pilot of any hazards like wind, heat, or cold that are preventing safe flight. Great, it looks like we got the photos we need for our report. We can check out other areas of interest using this method but for now, let's land and head up to the deck of the bridge where we will perform our map capture. Enter Map Capture and set up your scan boundaries. Map Capture is great for capturing large flat surfaces like the deck of this bridge. Instead of a ceiling and a floor like a 3D capture, 
your map capture will only have a height above surface. This will basically act as your distance to surface, which you already learned about. Here, we will be scanning the surface in two parts and combining the scans later using photogrammetry software. Once you're happy with your settings, begin your scan. Your drone will then fly a lawnmower or crosshatch pattern over your surface at the height you set. Always make sure that you have proper clearance to fly over the bridge surface and never operate over moving vehicles. If needed, pause and resume your scan to make way for moving vehicles. Enter 2D capture. Next, name your scan. Then, set your boundaries as well as the height of your capture, making sure the height is set below the bridge. Enable the upward capture toggle, located in the 2D capture settings. Upward capture is a feature that allows you to fly a traditional mapping pattern, but with the gimbal pointed 90 degrees up. This gives you the ability to inspect or scan the underside of a bridge. Skydio will automatically move the camera gimbal pitch to look up when it detects the height of the drone is below the specified scan surface. When finished, land and let your scan process. Once you've conducted your scans, you can process your data using photogrammetry software. Here's what our model of the bridge pillar looks like. Here is what our map capture looks like. To load your photos into photogrammetry software, extract the data from your SD card or access your media on Skydio Cloud if you have purchased MediaSync. Then upload your photos to your preferred photogrammetry software. Once your scan photos are uploaded, your model will process. From there, you'll be able to manipulate your scan to evaluate your inspection points, view photos from a specific location, and much more. Because Skydio creates efficient, autonomous flight paths when scanning, your reconstructions will be cleaner and use less photos than if you were to pilot these routes manually. With this inspection data, you have a baseline of critical information that you can use as you continue to inspect your bridge, building a data set to help you make decisions about your ongoing maintenance needs. Using your Skydio drone, you can leverage the autonomous features to accomplish any bridge inspection mission. Almost anyone can fly a drone and take a photo of a crack in a structure. But knowing how big that crack was last year or the year before is critical to making informed decisions. That's where Skydio really comes into play. Well, everyone, there you have it. We just learned about the different ways you can use your Skydio drone to perform a bridge inspection and how your Skydio can be a useful tool in your tool belt. We also got a look at what to do with your data when you're finished. One last thing before we wrap up. If you want to dive deeper into 3D Scan, check out our online and in-person training options at skydio.com forward slash Skydio Academy, or reach out to us to get your account set up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Skydio Flight School. Oh.